hey, remember this? I actually have a face. What's happening, everybody? Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter. Now, I'm normally fueled by the great folks at Nerd Tees, but it is exactly uh, 12.34 in the very early morning, 12.34 a.m. So if I was fueled by Nerd Tees right now, I would not sleep and I have to work tomorrow. But since it is 12.34 in the morning, what better time to talk about the 2018, 2019, these guys, the Montreal Canadiens who are now at the halfway mark of the 2018-2019 NHL season. As you can see by the title, we're calling this one Habs at the Half. So we're talking about Montreal after their 41st game, which they just recently played. This is one of those videos that I've been looking forward to making all season because I really wanted to contrast how Montreal looked at the halfway mark last season. Spoilers, it wasn't very good. And how they look at the halfway mark this season. Spoilers, it's a lot better. Not only do I want to talk about a couple of the reasons why I think that is the case, but at the end of the video, look, a lot of you know, I used to be a teacher. I used to, you know, get in there and try to mold the minds of the youth of Canada, and at least in a little way. So at the end of the video, I'm going to give out grades. I'm going to give out grades for the Montreal Canadiens offense, give out grades for the defense, grades for the goaltending, and just grades overall. Let's do our due diligence here before we go any further. Let's look at how Montreal was doing at this exact point last season after their 41st game, just prior to playing game number 42, and uh, oh boy. After 41 games in the 17-18 NHL season, Montreal was just 17-20-4. That's only 38 points and only gaining at least one point in about half of their games, just a little bit over half, 51.21%. Those 38 points had Montreal number 27 in the NHL at exactly the halfway mark last year. Their goal differential was an ugly minus 25. They had only scored 101 goals in 41 games, given up 126. They were losing your average game by a score of 2.46 to 3.07. The power play was middling at best, number 18 in the NHL, just 18.7%. The penalty kill was not good, 77.9%. That was number 26 in the league. And the faceoffs were not good either, not much better. Number 22 in the NHL, just 49.2%. It's tough to win when you're winning less than half the faceoffs. Now that I'm done twisting the knife, let's look at this season because a lot of these numbers look a lot better. After 41 games, the Montreal Canadiens this season are 22, 14, and 5. Doing some quick pirate maths, that means we have 49 points rather than the 38 points we had at this point last year. After 41 games, we are plus 11 to our point total from last year, picking up at least one point in 65.85% of the hockey games that Montreal has played this season. That is 14.64 percentage points higher than it was at this point last season. Rather than being in the bottom five of the NHL, we right now sit number 13 in the league in points. That is an increase of 14 spots in the league wide standings cha-ching while the goal differential on the season does sit at exactly zero giving up exactly the same number of goals as the team has scored that's a plus 25 in goal differential from this point last season so we're going to take that as a win while the defense hasn't really improved, in fact, the defense has given up two more goals than they did at this point last season, it's the offense that has really picked up the slack, scoring 27 more goals to this point this season than we had last year. Those 27 goals equate to two-thirds of a goal per game more than what we scored in 17-18. The vast, 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 vast majority of that extra offense has come at 5-on-5 five five as our power play has gotten worse. 13.1% on the power play to this point in the season. That is 5.6 percentage points less than what it was last year. We are the dead last place team in the NHL in terms of the power play, number 31. That's down 13 spots from last year. Penalty kill has also dropped by half a percentage point at 77.4%. However, that is number 21 in the NHL right now, so we've gotten better by a lot of other teams getting worse, moving up five points in those standings. 
And the face-offs, I didn't think things could get much worse. Unfortunately, they have dropped by about 1.9 percentage points, only 47.3% on the face-off dot this season. That is also dead last in the NHL. But let's face it, folks, most of the game is played at 5-on-5, and at 5-on-5, Montreal is significantly better than what they were last season. I wonder why that could be. Obviously, a lot of factors go into something like that, but I'm going to point out three specifically that I'm rather proud of as a fan. And number one, it starts with the team's best and highest paid player. Carey Price, like it or not, and a lot of people don't like it because of that contract, like it or not, Carey Price has played better this year. Is he worth the $10.5 million a year we're paying him? God, no. It's one of the worst contracts in the NHL. But he's playing better. At this point last season, Carey Price had played 28 games. All of them were starts. He only sported a 12, 14, and 2 record. Number 23 in the NHL at the time in wins by a goaltender. Not good enough. He had a 2.92 goals against average, which was number 39 in the NHL among goaltenders who had played at least 10 games up to that point. Save percentage didn't look a whole hell of a lot better. He has had a 9.10 at that point in the season, which was number 34 among goaltenders who had played at least double-digit games. To that point in the season, he also only had one shutout, which, I mean, look, shutouts are very difficult to get, but when you're assumed to be at least one of the best goaltenders in the world, you'd think you'd have more. In 2018-2019, it's not that everything's been rosy for Carey Price, but he's been objectively a better goaltender. He's played in a few more games, 31 games, 30 of those games have been starts, so getting a little extra work this season, which is always nice to see. 16, 10, and 4, which means he's plus 4 in the win column than he was a year ago at this point. Those 16 wins represent the 8th most wins in the NHL by a goaltender at this point in the season. That's plus 15 spots. The big improvement has come in the goals against average. He's brought it down from 2.92 to 2.75. Still not fantastic, but it's still a move significantly in the right direction. That goals against average has come down 17 one hundredths of a point, sits at number 28 in the NHL, again, among goaltenders who have played at least 10 games. That number might not look impressive, but it's plus 11 spots to where he was last year. The save percentage has stayed about the same, a 9.08 versus a 9.10, and to this point in the season, he's got two shutouts instead of just one. This all points to me as this is a player that is improving and getting better. I didn't need Carey Price this season to be the Carey Price of 14-15 or whenever his incredible his heart trophy season was. I think it was 14-15. I didn't need him to be that. I just needed him to show me that he was healthier and that he was slowly getting better. This is a long-term investment in this player, obviously, based on that contract. And what I'm seeing is a healthier Carey Price, even though he, you know, has missed the last couple of games, but came back for game number 41 and I believe pitched a shutout. So look, he's playing better and he seems to be healthier and that emboldens me as a fan. The second thing, uh, we won the Max Domi for Alex Galchenyuk trade, at least so far. Looking back at 17-18, I don't think anyone would be surprised at me saying Alex Galchenyuk was objectively, in 17-18, the better player. And I think to that point in their respective careers, Galchenyuk had been the better player. Both guys played 82 games last season, but Galchenyuk, I mean, look, 51 points, he scored 19 goals, it was minus 31, but it was an incredibly bad team, disciplined, only took 22 penalties, or 22 penalty minutes, I suppose I should say, 24 points on the power play, so he produced a bit on the power play, shot the puck a lot, over 210 shots last season, shot at a decent clip, 8.9%, especially on a team whose luck was just absolutely terrible, had no puck luck the last season whatsoever. The faceoffs left a lot to be desired, but Galchenyuk produced as an offensive player. And by most measurements, Max Domi was just not as good, just not on the same level last season. Again, only nine goals last year, and most people will point out, I think, at least half of them or more than half of them, I suppose, came as empty net goals. He only had 45 points, which is less. He was minus seven, which means he was better defensively on a bad hockey team, but that is measurable. But look, he took 
three penalties to every one that Galchenyuk took, so he spent a lot more time in the box, didn't shoot nearly as much, didn't shoot as effectively, and the face-offs were about the same. Last year, Galchenyuk was a better player. Max Domi has taken like a duck to water to the change of scenery this year. He has played fantastically for the Montreal Canadiens in 1819. I'm going to hit you with the 82 game paces that these two players are currently on, and I'm going to let you judge for yourself. Alex Galchenyuk's 82 game pace as it sits right now would read as follows. 16 and 33 for 49 points. That's pretty good. That's pretty damn close to what he did last season. Of course, he's also on pace to be a minus 30 player for the second season in a row. Few more penalty minutes, 38 versus the 22 he had last year. A little better on the power play, though. On pace for 27 points on the power play, we only had 24 last year. Only one game-winning goal and not shooting the puck nearly as much. Galchenyuk only on pace for 160 shots versus the 213 that he took last year. The shooting percentage is up a little bit. The face-off percentage is up a little bit. So there are some things, some areas where Galchenyuk has improved as a player. But offensively, he's about the same, if not a little bit regressed. Here's the 82-game pace that Max Domi is currently on. 28 goals, 48 assists, 76 points. Now look, I'm not going to sit here and say that Max Domi is going to have 76 points this season. But that's what he's on pace for. He's also on pace to be a plus 12 after being a minus 7 last year. And you look at Max Domi, who would be a plus 12 on pace this season. Galchenyuk on pace to be a minus 30. Uh, Which one of those two would you rather have? Domi on pace for 90 penalty minutes. I'd like to see him bring those numbers down a little bit. Spend a little less time in the box. But a little bit of sandpaper on the team never hurt anybody. On pace to double his power play production from last season, 18 points versus the 9 that he put up last season in Arizona. He's also on pace for 4 game-winning goals after having none last season. You can always do with a little more clutch. One thing that I really like to see, he's shooting the puck a lot more on pace this season for 190 shots, which would be an increase of about half a shot a game over what he did in Arizona last year where he only had 150. Part of the reason he's on pace for 28 goals is he's shooting at a ridiculous 14.7%. That obviously is going to regress in the second half of the season. I don't think he's the kind of player that keeps up with that pace. But I mean, if he keeps up at double digits, he's going to top 20 easily. When you're talking about trades with young players, obviously you can't really make a judgment on the trade until a few seasons have passed. But so far, that's been a win for Mark Bergevin and a win for these guys. And the last aspect I want to point out before we get into giving this team their grades that I'm going to be giving them anyway, is the crown jewel of their draft class of 2018, number three overall, Jesperi Kotkaniemi. And folks, if I had a thesis statement, it would be this. Jesperi Kotkaniemi looks like he deserved to be the number three overall pick in the draft after all. I'll be the first one to raise my hand and say, I didn't like the pick at the time. I thought with the number three overall pick, Montreal would pick Philip Zadina, and they didn't do that. I looked at Jesperi Kotkaniemi, and I saw a player who, in his only pro season in Liga with Asat, he was a half-game player who, gotta call it like I see it, basically disappeared in the playoffs. I believed he was a player that needed at least one to two seasons in the American Hockey League to develop and really bring his game to an NHL, a North American NHL level. Whereas I thought Philip Zadina specifically was an NHL ready player right out of the gate. Since obviously I was a fan of giving you the 82 game paces of Max Domi and Alex Galchenyuk in the previous segment, let me give you the 82 game pace right now being set by Jesper Kotkaniemi. 8 goals, 30 assists, 38 points, plus 2, 24 penalty minutes playing disciplined hockey, 154 shots, I'm pretty cool with that for a player that's not really a sniper, and winning 48% of his face-offs, which on the Montreal Canadiens means you're above average. I'm looking at a player that in his rookie season, I undervalued, I underrated. 
I didn't give him the credit that he deserved. A rookie that has settled into that third line center role. Most of the season, he's been attached to one or both of Arturi Lekkonen and Paul Byron, two players that are veteran players that can teach him about the NHL, teach him about being a disciplined hockey player, teach him about being a professional. He's also been centering that second power play unit where he's basically been attached at the hip with Brendan Gallagher. Now look, our power play has been terrible, but I want him to have that experience. I want him to have the experience of centering a power play unit with an effective, a very strong offensive player like Brendan Gallagher. I want him to soak that up. I want him to know what that means and what that's like because that's only going to benefit him down the line. Folks, I'll say it. I was wrong about Jesper Kotkaniemi, and I couldn't be happier about that. Folks, at the halfway mark of the 2018-2019 NHL regular season, here are my grades for my Montreal Canadiens. We're going to give two grades to the offense, two grades to the defense, two grades to the goaltending, and two grades overall. One grade is against my personal expectations, what I expected from this team this year, and the other grade is going to be overall to the greater idea of the NHL. I mean, the offense has been A-plus to my own expectations. My expectations were this offense is going to struggle for another season. They traded Max Pacioretty. Like, this offense was going to be bad this year. That's what I expected. So the fact that we've scored 128 goals, we're in the top 12 right now in scoring in the NHL, that's an A-plus to my expectations. And overall, I think the grade's a B. I mean, we're well within the top half of the league in scoring right now, which is something I never would have expected and just something that I don't think the greater league at large would have expected from Montreal this season. So for me, overall, I think it's a B. The defense obviously still leaving something to be desired, and that's carryover from last season. I think maybe they're starting to move in the right direction a little bit. I'd like to see them obviously do more. I'd like to see these young players like Mete and Yulson take that next step forward. Hopefully that comes in the next year or so. It's about a C to my expectations because I guess it's right around where they were last season. So I didn't, you know, I was hoping for that step forward. I don't necessarily know that I was expecting it. It's only about a D plus overall. I mean, look, we're in the bottom 10 in goals allowed right now. That's not exactly a good look for a team that for the long long time has been predicated on its defense. So it's it's a D plus overall, but but a C to what I expected. The goaltending, to my expectations, I'm going to give it a C plus, simply because I'm seeing some things out of Carey Price that I wanted to see, which was playing more, looking a little healthier, taking steps, looking like he's getting better. So that's right around what my expectations were this year. He's exceeded them a slight amount, so we're going to go C+. Overall, to the grand scheme of the NHL, it's still about a C-, minus because, I mean, if you look at the rankings, especially for save percentage, it's really not where you want to be. Keep going. Like, keep it up. Like, I'm a supporter. I'm a Carey Price fan. He's one of my favorite players in the league, one of my favorite all-time players for the Montreal Canadiens. I want to see him get back to where I know he's capable of being. Right now, it's a C- minus in the context of the greater NHL, but keep going. Overall, the 2018-2019 Montreal Canadiens are an A to my expectations. I never would have expected that at the halfway mark, of the NHL regular season, Montreal would be in a playoff spot. I figured this would be another season where Montreal is probably in contention for a draft lottery pick. Certainly not in contention for a playoff spot. So it's an A to my expectations, and the fact that they're in a playoff spot right now means they got to be at least somewhere in the B range Overall, in the greater context of the NHL, we're going to go B minus. It doesn't feel right to give them a C plus because, like, look, I don't think most of the rest of the NHL expected Montreal to be a playoff team right now. That's a credit to the coaching staff. That's a credit to the players. That's a credit to virtually everyone involved with this organization, including Mark Bergevin, who is at times the internet's punching bag. But look, He's done things that have objectively improved the team this season, and you got to give the guy credit where it's due. There you go, folks. Habs at the half. My look at the first half of the Montreal Canadiens 2018-2019 regular season. How do you feel about the Habs to this point 
in the season. Toss that in the comment section below. That's it for me, Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter. Not fueled this evening by Nerd Tees, but I certainly will be tomorrow to get through work. Thank you so much for watching, and enjoy the second half of this incredible NHL season. Let's make those playoffs. Ooh, did I say that out loud? <laughs>